Can you explain what an IRCS or Intensive Rehabilitative oh, Custody and Supervision yeah. Program is? Yeah, it's a specialized program that's set up uh, in uh, in consolidation with a bunch of resources that the provincial government has and the federal government has. And essentially what they're trying to do is uh, group uh, together resources so they can focus attention on uh, certain offenders that require extra assistance to ensure uh, integration to society. So particularly ones with uh, specialized needs, uh, either the seriousness of the offense or uh, specialized mental health needs. Aside from specialized needs, are there any other requirements that would make someone a best candidate for this program? Yeah, in order to be assessed as a, a suitable candidate, uh, a person needs to have uh, some sort of uh, disorder uh, or, or a health issue of the mind. Uh, they also need to be approved by the provincial uh, uh, director of the program as a suitable candidate. And the, the, the type of offense that would uh, uh, be uh, possible, a NERC sentence would be possible for, um, e there, there are very few types of offenses that would qualify. The more serious offenses obviously uh, involved uh, murder, manslaughter and, and those sorts of offenses or if an individual has a repeated history of serious violent offenses and then is facing another serious violent offense for which they could s uh, receive a significant jail sentence for. And what kind of treatment would someone get in this program as opposed to if they were sentenced as an adult or, or the programming adults receive? The, a regular young person who's uh, serving a sentence in the youth system would generally be given a, a kind of a one-size-fits-all type of programming. The IRCS program is focused on the individual offender trying to determine what uh, needs that specific offender would have and, and it's very much hands-on. In the youth system the people progress through the, the one-size-fits-all programming option and when they're uh, done their two-thirds of their sentence they're, they're then sent out on the community supervision portion uh, of their sentence, so released back into the community. The IRCS program has the ability for the coordinator of the program to uh, keep an individual in the secured programming more uh, for a longer term than, than a, a normal sentence would be, so it gives the, the, the manager of the program the ability to pull an offender back into a custodial setting rather than releasing them back into the community just because they hit the the two-thirds of their sentence which would require their statutory release into the uh, into the community. Uh, so that focused attention is really the important distinction as well as the resources that are allocated. There can be funding for education and, and other programming which just isn't available to other uh, offenders in the regular system. So it, there's significant program advantages for, for people and I think that the success rate for integration for these very serious uh, uh, situations involving uh, unique offenders, the the benefits, I think, have been demonstrated through through cases previously. In a case like the underage killer of Hannah Leffler, how would a judge decide whether he is a candidate for IRCS? The, the, the judge has to assess so many factors and, and these cases are so difficult for, for everybody involved, but mostly for uh, decision makers like the judge, uh, obviously the victims, of course, being the, the most serious affected. The, 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 um, the, the judge in this case is going to have to look at all the circumstances. There would be a number of reports that would have been ordered, a pre-sentence report as well as specialized psychological assessments, and then, uh, and then an IRCS report as well. The, the judge is going to have to consider both the time that the uh, offender has already spent in custody and, and then determine whether a youth sentence can meet the needs of the community and the offender. And the, the youth system presumes that the young person would be sentenced as a youth and not as an adult so the burden is on the Crown and the Crown would be trying to focus their attention on the seriousness of the offense, uh, the moral uh, blameworthiness of the young person and uh, whether the young person uh, is, uh, is really one of those people that has the diminished moral capacity of many young people. The, the seriousness of the offense will obviously uh, be the focus of the Crown's arguments and the need for rehabilitation and, and the fact that reintegration is important no doubt would be the arguments that the defense put forward. A difficult case for, for a judge to decide no doubt though. Sounds like it. Thanks for your time tonight and the insight Brian. Thank you very much for having me. Brian Pfefferly is a criminal defense lawyer in Saskatoon.